head slide right. Yeah, we go to uh, Memorial, uh, Vietnam Vet Memorial, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they got a Vietnam vet. I look for my dad. <laughs> yeah, I go around, all around. What I finally found, this is my dad here. A lot of uh, soldier. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I saw it. Sorry, it's the clear. Uh, <laughs> To your right and to your left. 
in this nation to represent the sacrifices of the Vietnam veteran. That deserves a hand. The program today is about laying 581 bricks. Mm. Uh, I don't have the first brick in hand, I usually do, but the last brick will be of John Sidney McCain III. Uh, we kind of rushed that through. And just time for a quick little story about that. Uh, I've been doing this now, I think this is my seventh year for doing the BRIC program. And uh, every year, one way or another, just would not permit. But it was important to Senator McCain, and he wanted to make sure it got on his agenda. John McCain is no longer with us. He will not be able to do that. So when you think today about the people you are honoring, and those that you do want to honor with a brick, please do not delay. I wish I could have had my father here when I put his brick in the ground. He was deceased a few years prior to me getting around to doing that. It's kind of told me, excuses don't get it. So I'm just asking you to give that some thought. We've got plenty of brick forms in the gift shop. Uh, take those with you. Encourage those who keep saying, yeah, I got to get brick for Bob or brick for Mary or brick for Dad in the ground to get her done. Because time's wasting. We're not here forever. Food for thought. We talked about cell phones. Thank you very much for silencing your cell phones. Another thing about brick etiquette. What's the one thing that I ask that you day? There will be over 4,500 bricks in the ground along these walkways. We're at the point in the program where we say welcome and, and thank you. Uh, welcome's done. Uh, we're going to get a flag raised here in a moment. Uh, I got to say thank you to Kim. Kim is playing the bagpipes for us today. If you see Kim, please, please, except when she's playing, when she's not playing, please thank her for being here. Kim has come all the way from Hawaii to be here with us today. Wow. That was not an easy swim, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, if you look behind me here, to my left, you're right, we incurred some additional expenses with this year's program. We rushed some of the bricks through. Uh, we had to buy some uh, materials to help hold the bricks up against the uh, walkways because we've learned it rains up here in Angel Fire and when it rains, it rains real heavy and starts to wash things away. So to do it right, we've got some landscaping edging to do that. All of that said, we've got some more expenses, but thanks to Red Eagle Royale, Red Eagle was the subject of this uh, poster, this painting, by world-renowned artist J.D. Salinger, uh, who lived in Taos for a while and still has a gallery there. Uh, there's a, a much larger version that hangs in our gift shop. I'm asking all of you to think about purchasing this. Somebody step up and purchase this for $500. That will cover all of our expenses. Red Eagle, Red Eagle, you're in the crowd. Come out here. Red Eagle, how long ago was it you were the subject for this uh, painting? Oh, okay. Quite a long story. Probably 20 years ago, maybe. Anyway, uh, just uh, really I was walking downtown house behind the post hold, office. Hold the mic up. And uh, J.D. Challenger had an, uh, this little gallery back there. So uh, he tells me, uh, hey, you're a veteran. I just happen to have my own fatigues on. And he tells me, I do a lot of uh, portraits of uh, 
Veterans. Veterans. So then he says, uh, you don't mind if I take a little snapshot of it? I said, yeah, why not? So he went in there, took a quick snapshot. I didn't hear anything for about 10, 15 years. So I thought, oh, he forgot. <laughs> he must have forgot about it anyway. So anyway, one day, they show up here with a copy of it. And uh, it hung up in the, the gift shop here for quite, quite a while. And my old friend Chuck over here, he says, I want to know who that guy is. So he walks all over Taos County, I guess. I don't know where I'm going anyway. But he has this poster and he's pulling it up and he's asking ta people from Taos Pueblo, uh, I don't know if they ask for. And he goes up to my little Pueblo pickeries and he's walking on the road. Oh, we know that guy. He asked him, do you know this? Yeah, that's Red Eagle. He lives down the road over there. So he tracked me down and uh, that's how the poster ended up being here and uh, I was part of the subject, so that's the little short story I have to tell you. So, you Red Eagle, thank you very much. Uh, Red Eagle is uh, quite a gentleman like so many of us here today. He has a story to tell. Uh, he, was a, he was a sergeant in Vietnam, and I hope, uh, I hope you won't be shy about uh, going up, shaking his hand, thanking him for his service, and saying hello. Uh, he's a wonderful human being, and he, uh, he adds a lot to this, his presence adds a lot to this memorial. While Red Eagle was speaking, a gentleman came up to me and said, Sold. Oh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your generosity. Um, now, I don't have any more framed, but I've got some in a canister. And we've got some that are signed by Red Eagle. That makes it very, very special. And if you're probably really nice, he might personalize it for you as well. So if that is of interest to you, we've got some in the gift shop. You're going to be here a while today. Please don't hesitate to get to our gift shop. Gail and Leanne, are you out here? Okay, Gail and Leanne are working in the gift shop. Uh, they've been there for many, many years. Literally, we've had them chained in there for many, many years. Uh, so go ahead and see Gail and Leanne. They may need some water I'm, or maybe some breadcrumbs. I don't know. But they would love to sell you something today. So please keep that in mind. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Each brick here that's in the ground or that's going to be laid today tells a story. And I ask that you also please do not be shy about telling those stories. That's what keeps these names in our memories. And that's what keeps those names from being forgotten. Uh, those bricks today, they're not red clay that's been fired into a shape of four by eight. They represent a human spirit, and that spirit will be on these hills for time and eternity. And I can't think of a better place that I find myself, hopefully being someday, out in a cemetery that we're going to talk to you about here in just a few minutes uh, that uh, we will hopefully break ground on a little later today. Uh, are there any members of the David Westfall uh, Veterans Foundation board in the audience today? If they're uh, here, could I, could I hear the Air Force go wop wop or something like that? Well, here's one here. <laughs> Not Air Force. <laughs> well, no, no, this is Army. This is Army. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you at this time Chuck Howe, who's president of the Westfall Foundation and Mayor Pro Tem of Angel Fire, New Mexico. Thank you, Dave. Welcome home, brothers and sisters. Welcome home. How many of you have been here for 12 years? Anybody? I see one, two, three. Okay, make it four. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for coming. We have people here from as far away as Hawaii, as Dick said, upstate New York. Uh, we have people from uh, Colorado by way of Australia who served <laughs> in Vietnam. 
So at this time, I want to welcome some people, and I'm not sure if Dick and I are going to cross over here. Uh, have you welcomed the staff here? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Um, staff that works this, if you raise your hands and come up. Deb? Mary? Deb. Mary? Ethan? Ethan? Oh, uh, these are the three people that make this happen 24 by 7, 365 days a year. We want to thank them. <laughs> thank you all. We have a fantastic crew here. And if you walk through the uh, visitor center again, it gets better and better every day. On August 4th of this year, back in the conference room, we added a Native American exhibit. We're featuring code talkers uh, along with several other individuals. And we have the son of a Navajo code talker here today, Teddy Draper. Teddy, would you hold your hand up over here? Now I'd like to ask Alan Martinez to come up, please. Alan is the Deputy Cabinet Secretary for Veteran Services. He's been working in uh, that office for more than 20 years. 25 years. Alan does lots of things, but one of the things he does really well is every year when the legislature is in session, he has a bed over there. And he's over there getting money for veterans every day that session's open. I'm going to ask Alan to come up and, among other things, uh, give you a couple words on the State Rural Veterans Cemetery directly behind us. Uh, just so everybody knows, Chuck taught me everything that I do in Santa Fe. <laughs> if you want to know how to ask for money, just hang out with Chuck. Uh, I want to welcome you all here today. Veterans, welcome home. It's beautiful up here. Mm -hmm. I was coming over the, the canyon this morning, and I was really grateful for the state that we live in. This is a beautiful state. I love New Mexico. It's the best state in the country. And it's all because of you, the sacrifices that you and your family have made to guarantee our freedoms so that we can gather in such a beautiful place and remember those sacrifices. So today I am proud to announce that in a couple of months we're going to be breaking ground down here. Oh. Angel Fire will be the third rural veterans cemetery. Uh, we hope to have that finished by Veterans Day of next year. So Angel Fire will be, we'll have another thing to draw veterans from across the country and around the world to this beautiful place, the sacred place, this place that I'm proud to be a part of. So look for us, listen for the announcements, we'll be out here probably late October to break ground, start construction on this, and put another jewel in Angel Fire. So Chuck, I appreciate the Foundation's support and cooperation. Mr. Dickerson, appreciate everything. And I do once again want to thank Deb and Mary and Ethan. They do an incredible job here, and they, they do it Mary's, Mary's still a soldier. She puts her head down, keeps the mission first, and moves forward. And, and I have her to thank for the beautiful area that we enjoy. Deb, thanks a lot. Thanks to you and your staff. I appreciate all the hard work. All right, my last thank you of the morning goes to Run for the Wall. This would not happen without you. 
if you ever decide not to come, that's the end of this. So no pressure. <laughs> Dick. Again, you, you've got programs, so you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen here. Uh, if there are youngsters in the uh, audience, uh, in a little while, I'm going to call them down so we can do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. But before that, we're going to have the raising of the flag and the national anthem that will be sung, sung by uh, <coughs> Kelly Burninclaw. Uh Kelly is the daughter of Steve. Steve, put your hand up. Proud Stop. father. Proud Thank father, you. Steve. Uh, Steve. Uh, Steve is the uh, major administrative wheel behind uh, Run for the Walls effort here. And uh, Freddie, Freddie, are you in the immediate area? I won't ask. There, Freddie's back there, red hat on, blue shirt, beard, and very quiet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's the one who makes sure the bricks are going to get in order. Uh, so no, with 581, no pressure there. Uh, uh, the, the flags will be uh, piped in uh, by Kim, and we will start the flag raising ceremony now. Cái gì à? Cái gì à? Không nhăn nhăn là sẽ đó. Cái gì gì được cái gì được. Anh phim là nó. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale 
guerrillas fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Kelly, raise your hand again. If you see Kelly today, you thank her for a beautiful rendition of our national anthem. That's fantastic. Darn sure. Very nice. All right. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I need some youngsters down here who know the Pledge of Allegiance. Please come forward. This is your moment to shine. Hi there. What's your name? Future members. Possibly future members of our armed forces. I think I've got a feeling one of them for sure uh, are going to lead us in the national anthem. Uh, now, folks, I'm going to ask you to gather, uh, not the National Anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I'm really excited that you're here. Uh, I want you to gather around this microphone and kind of just... Oh, one more. Oh, one more. we got a couple more, a couple latent ones. So, everybody, in tight, around me. Around me. Okay. Closer, closer. And loud. All right, ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right on, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's give them a big round of applause here. Uh, the, the chaplain from the National Guard was uh, going to catch a ride on a Blackhawk. And uh, everybody gather around and put their hand on this brick. Please bow your head. Father, or those that we pray to, we ask that you bless those that are here today and bless those that they remember today. Allow us to walk these grounds in a holier spiritual way today and be good followers of your word and show appreciation for all the bounty you have granted us. Amen. You know what's gonna happen now? A bagpiper is going to pipe us back up there, and we're going to lay some bricks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.
going this way to see if I can find her. Hello, what do you say? Too far, too far. I'm too far. You Oscar Cole Mann, Jr., United States Army, 1969 to 1974. Okay. You are. You are. I'm getting the second. Okay, you are. 
em, em lấy cái máy tiền của em nó em chụp nhiều và nhiều quay phim hiểu không chúng tôi đừng quay đây chúng bây giờ đừng quay đi hiểu không hiểu không làm cái chương trình này gì đấy nè bây giờ đừng quay đi nhưng mà lúc nữa đó khi nào anh lên đó thì anh quay này rồi như một tay quay quay cái để này như em mang như vậy á còn tay quay cái này quay rồi cái kia chụp hình chụp hình cái lúc mình đưa biết cái đó quan trọng nhưng mà phải làm nhanh ở thế đó thì đó nó đừng chụp nữa lấy của em chụp hình ready à thấy chưa David A. Turner, United States Army, 1970 to 1976. Harry Lemoyne Clark. <laughs> The second, the United States Navy, 1965 to 1968. Anh quay rồi quay đi nhắn lắm chừng bay à, à, nhưng mà đừng chụp hình em em gương này chụp hình cái là đứt cái à. đừng đừng có chụp hình chụp hình của em á. Daniel Lee Gonzalez. À. United States Marine Corps, 
Richard Hubbard, United States Marine Corps, 1967 to 1968. Ronald Justin Tillery, United States Army, 1966 to 1970. Giselle Wilson, United States Marine Corps, 1963 to 1974. Daniel Brocker, United States Army. xong cái anh draft này draft đi xem anh đồ quay xin đi chơi quay bằng cái này chứ quay bằng cái này gót cái này xong bỏ trống hết là xong này xong rồi
cứ kêu là được nên có cái đà đó cái ông cầm cái len xuống rồi Nếu anh học sinh của Hải Thị Kiếp Hồn, mấy thì chân đi kêu thì tao đi tao đi Thank you. 
joy to this country, 5 May 1968.
Mike Broncia. Mike Broncia. Mike Broncia. Mike Broncia. có người sống người ta vẫn để đó mà à, có, phải có. chết mới để đâu New Mexico. New Mexico. Oh, the New Mexico. William Eugene Morgan Jr., United States Army, 
Frieza Jr. Yeah. Yeah. William Frieza Jr. United States Army gave his life for this country on 27 April 1968. <laughs> Lawrence C. Allen, United States Army, 1970 to 1972. Ronald Taylor. United States Marine Corps, 1963 to 1963. Leroy Johnson, United States Army. Gave his life for this country on 29 April 1968. Oh. Sáu cái cờ kia là sáu binh chủng. Air Force, Navy, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, sáu binh chủng. Còn cái cái cờ này là prisoner of war. Cái cờ kia là United States. Còn cái cờ này là New Mexico. 1942 to 1946. Ralph L. Snow, United States Marine Corps, 1957-1970. เขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเขาเรียกว่าเป็นเข
for myself, I escaped Vietnam in 1975. 1975. Uh, right after the uh, right Vietnam war. collapsed. Remember yeah. the Vietnam War? Yes, 70 April of 70. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You in the Vietnam? Yes, 1970. Oh, wow. I so that you like know the test of I you come to help my country. I wish when, we could have done more. Oh, oh, when, whenever <laughs> I see yeah. the, the vet from the US in Vietnam, I always say thank you because they stratify their young So you know and, uh, they are freedom right is not to free. To help. Well, you and your fellow countrymen and women know better than anyone else yeah. freedom is not free. Yeah. Yeah. The history of war mm -hmm. in Vietnam all of the problems that yeah. occurred with that. I, have, have you been back to the Oh, many, many time. time. Every because I had we uh, some brother and sister still there. Okay. Yeah. I don't have nobody on my side. Okay. Where, do you, where do you live here in the States? In California. Oh, in California. Oh, yeah, I, I roll, I start from 2 a.m. <laughs> From California last <laughs> night, before last night, because yeah, yeah. we don't want to miss the ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful that you're yeah. here, and yeah. it's an honor to be here. Anything yeah. we can do to make the experience yeah. more meaningful, please. Yeah. Let me know. But I appreciate you spend a lot of time for this organization. I appreciate that. Yeah. It just doesn't happen on the flip of a coin. There yeah. is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know that, that a lot of work, yes. not that easy. Yeah. 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 Well. Thank you for being here. I hope we honor your father yeah. in a way that you, you yeah. are happy. Yeah, I will return here again. Yeah. Got my father here. So it's a very special place. Yeah, yeah, it's it's special. beautiful. It's such I, beautiful. I didn't know until nine months ago when I traveled here. Oh, I discovered this one. So we, I on the talk. road, we just saw all oh, Vietnam uh, memorial. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know. I did know one, one, one of the DC yeah. only. Everybody <laughs> know the YNDC, even right. though our friend don't even know this one exists. Right. Yeah. And this this memorial was here eight years yeah. before, before the memorial. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what Mary see. told yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's pretty special. Yeah, very yeah. special. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, you, if you have been here before, you've been here probably when it's been much quieter. Uh, and it's a very nice place to just come yeah. and relax and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, very peaceful here. Yeah. It is. And a very, a very respectful crowd mm -hmm. today. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They're applauding for every Brit that goes yeah, in yeah, the room. Yeah. Well, I'll see you all later. Yeah. Sure, yeah, thank you for everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Roy, Helen, Vermont, United States Army. Siebert, J. Kelly, United States Army, 
State in action, 30 April 1968. Army, 
Okay. Ivo, Mark Michael York, United States Army, killed in action, 28 April 1968. Roger Lee Vickers. United States Army, 1967 to 1969. This gentleman made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Walter Blaylock, United States Army, 1963 to 1966. We are now, now starting section 103. Jeff Dwight Jones, United States Army, 1994 1998. United States Army, 1943-1944. This gentleman made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. <laughs> Jeff Barry Jones, United States Navy. 1953 to 1956. Yeah. William E. Simone, United States Army, 1965 to 1967. James Clay Hamlin, Sr., United States Army, 1968 to 1970. Nathan 
A. Smith, United States Air Force, 1978-1982. Dale R. Konitska, United States Marine Corps. 1967 to 1970. Raymond F. Smith, United States Navy, 1944 to 1951.
Ladies and gentlemen, with that last brick, that's all we're going to lay uh, before we have lunch. I wanted to give a little bit of lunch protocol here. Uh, the food that's been brought in to us today is for Run for the Wall, the Mexico Army National Guard, and we have every reason to believe there will be food available for those who would like to eat after the Guard and the Run for the Wall folks have been served. But before we break for lunch, it's my honor to present to you uh, Chaplain, uh, Chaplain Krupnik from the New Mexico uh, Army National Guard, who will share a few thoughts and bless our food. Please join us for the blessing. Please join me in this prayer as your faithful comes to life. Let us pray. Lord God of all creation, you have nourished us already by the events that have happened this morning. Lord, you have nourished our spirits, you have nourished our emotions, and Lord, perhaps for some here, there's been some healing that has taken place. And Lord, we thank you for that healing and what it means. God, I would ask that you would continue that nourishment of our bodies, and that you would bless this food for that purpose, that we can carry on the many things that we will be doing this afternoon. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. We'll meet back up here around 1 o'clock to continue with the Medal of Honor Brick Program. Thank you. You started about eight years ago. You see those bricks laid in front of you there on the walkway. Uh, and it's become a very meaningful part of this overall program that's done on book day. Uh, we were eight books in the program, eight men, or in one case, one woman who has been awarded uh, the Medal of Honor, the highest medal that the military can, in this country can give its soldiers, sailors, Marines, Navy, uh, I'm going to ask that, again, everybody kind of quiet down. Citations will be read of these Medal of Honor recipients. Uh, and I know there are words here that you would like to hear. In some cases, there are a few words that are not the citation to give you a little feel about the individual uh, and maybe what they suffered in going through. Uh, and which ultimately concluded in the uh, rewarding of the have been acquired. Three were laid in the ground last year. Two are being laid in the ground this year. The wonderful thing about this story is Lori's students, I believe 12 of them, <coughs> relating to native New Mexican Alejandro Riorenta Ruiz. Sergeant Alejandro Renteria Ruiz, 26 June 1923 to 20 November 2009, was a former U.S. Army soldier who received the Medal of Honor, the U.S. military's highest award for valor, for his actions during the Battle of Okinawa in World War II. Alejandro Renteria Ruiz was born on 26 June 1923 in Loving, New Mexico. He was also raised there. He enlisted in the Army at Carlsbad, New Mexico, upon the outbreak of World War II. He was assigned to the 27th Infantry Division after completing basic training. During World War II, the conquest of the Japanese island of Okinawa was considered vital for the Allied forces as a step toward the, an invasion of the Japanese mainland. The invasion, codenamed Operation Iceberg, was the largest amphibious operation of the Pacific War and involved units of the U.S. 10th Army, commanded by Lieutenant General Simon Bolivar <coughs> Buckner, Jr. These units consisted of three amphibious corps, first the 6th Marine Divisions, the 2nd Marine Division as in a float reserve, and the 24th Corps, 7th, 77th, 96th, and 27th Infantry Divisions. On 28 April 1945, Private Reese's unit was pinned down by machine gun fire coming from a camouflaged Japanese pillbox 
and was unable to advance to its assigned objective. Luis, on his own initiative, charged the pillbox under a hail of machine gun fire. On his second attempt, he was able to neutralize the pillbox by killing all of its occupants. For his actions, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. The Medal of Honor citation reads as follows. When his unit <clears throat> was stopped by a skillfully camouflaged enemy pillbox, he displayed conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty. His squad, suddenly brought under a hail of machine gun fire and a vicious grenade attack, was pinned down. Jumping to his feet, Private Ruiz seized an automatic rifle and lunged through the flying grenades and rifle and automatic fire for the top of the emplacement. When an enemy soldier charged him, his rifle jammed. Undaunted, Private Ruiz whirled on his assailant and cut him down. Then he ran back through bullets and grenades, seized, <coughs> excuse me, seized more ammunition and another automatic rifle, and again made for the pillbox. Enemy fire now was concentrated on him, but he charged on, miraculously re reaching the position, and in plain view he climbed to the top. Leaping from one opening to another, he sent burst after burst into the pillbox, killing 12 of the enemy and completely destroying the position. Private Reese's heroic conduct in the face of overwhelming odds saved the lives of many comrades and eliminated an obstacle that long would have checked his unit's advance. On 26 June 1946, President Harry S. Truman presented Ruiz with the Medal of Honor in a ceremony held at the White House. Scott advanced with the leading platoon of his company to attack the enemy position, urging his men forward in the face of enemy rifle and enemy machine gun fire. He had pushed forward alone to a point midway across the barren hilltop, within 75 yards of the enemy, where the enemy had a attack, which, if successful, would have gained undisputed Enemy riflemen charged out on the plateau, firing and throwing grenades as they moved to engage our troops. The company was doomed, but Lieutenant Scott, with only a blasted tree stump for cover, stood his ground against the wild enemy assault. By firing his carbine and throwing the grenades in his possession, he momentarily stopped the enemy advance, using the brief respite to obtain more grenades. Disregarding the small arms fire and exploding grenades aimed at him, suffering a bullet wound in the left hand and a painful shrapnel wound in the head after his carbine had been shot from his hand, he threw grenade after grenade with devastating accuracy until the beaten enemy withdrew. Our troops, inspired to renewed effort by Lieutenant Scott's intrepid stand and incomparable courage, swept across the plateau to capture the hill and from this strategic position four days later Citations for Jerry M. Rose to be read by Kai Mikai. Task Force One, Fifth 
Special Forces Group Airborne, 1st Special Forces. On 12 September 1970, his company was engaged by a well-armed hostile force. Enemy B-40 rockets and mortar rounds rained while the foe sprayed the area with small arms, automatic weapons, and machine gun fire, wounding many and forcing everyone to seek cover. One ally was unable to reach protective shelter due to weakened conditions. Sergeant Rose, braving the bullet-infested fire zone, sprinted 50 meters to his downed comrade's side. The sergeant then used his own body to protect the casualties from further injury while treating his wounds. After stopping the blood flow from the wound, Sergeant Rose carried the man back through the bullet-ridden zone to protect his cover. As the belligerents accelerated their attack, Sergeant Rose continued to disregard his own safety as he ran from casualty to casualty, administering Ignoring his own pain, Sergeant Rose struggled to his feet and continued to administer the medical treatment to the other injured soldiers. As night approached, the order was given to dig the of the Sergeant Rose, his own wounds yet untreated, worked tirelessly to evacuate many trenches for the severely injured who were unable to dig their own. Stopping the went when all the casualties had been placed in safe positions. All through the night and into the next day, the foe pounded the Allied force with a continuous raid. Volley following around him, Sergeant Rose displayed a Two were so severely wounded that they would have died without the sudden position of fear. Finally, on 14 September, the company was, was successfully extracted. was safely out of the area. Signed, Lyndon B. Johnson, President. to something greater than themselves. I dedicate a new chapter by adding on to what is already here with new names of service and sacrifice. Lord, I can see the role that I play in others' lives and to know that read by Kelly Bernacois. Uh, Kelly is representing the Run for the Wall writers and will do the reading. Thank you. He was also a professional football player with the New York Giants. 
Loomis was in the first wave of troops to land at Iwo Jima on D-Day, 19 February, 1945. He landed at 9 a.m. on the beach known as Red One. He and his platoon spent the next two weeks incessantly fighting the Dugan Japanese. His initial duty was a liaison officer for the 2nd Battalion, spotting targets on the slopes of Mount Suribachi for artillery and airstrikes. On 6 March, he was given command of Company E's 3rd Rifle Platoon. On 8 March, his platoon was spearheading a final assault on an objective east of Kitano Point, near the northern edge of the island. Despite minor wounds received from grenade shrapnel, Loomis knocked out three enemy strongholds, well-fortified positions arranged to defend each other, which were preventing his platoon from reaching his objective. Following this action, he stepped on a landmine and was mortally wounded, losing his legs. While lying on the ground, he urged his platoon on until he was carried off to an aid station. At the aid station, he famously told the doctor, Thomas M. Brown, well, Doc, the New York Giants lost a mighty good end today. He was transferred to the field hospital, where he underwent surgery and a transfusion of 18 pints of blood, but died of internal wounds on the operating table. In a letter to his mother, Lewis is standing on the wrote, Jack suffered very little, for he didn't live long. I saw Jack soon after he, he was hit. With calmness, serenity, and complacency, Jack said, the New York Giants lost a good man. We all lost a good man. His Medal of Honor citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity, at the risk of his life above, above and beyond the call of duty as leader of a rifle platoon attached to the 2nd Battalion, 27th Marines, 5th Marine Division, in action against enemy Japanese forces on Iwo Jima in the Volcano Islands, 8 March, 1945. Resuming his assault tactics with bold decision after fighting without respite for two days and nights. Outstanding valor, skilled tactics, and tenacious perseverance in the face of overwhelming odds, First Lieutenant Loomis had inspired his stout-hearted Marines to continue the relentless dive
hay quá hả ừ. hay quá hai anh được cơ hội này nghe được Kelly, would you please come forward and lead us in one verse of God Bless America? A verse that we would like to um, I'm really tempted to say something like play ball. <laughs> However, we're gonna lay bricks. So, uh, brick layers, front and center. Program's yours.